Welcome back to Life by Abe. My name is Abe. Today is a hot day in Hanoi, and we're going to interview Nico. So, Nico, first, welcome on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, could you introduce yourself to us? Tell us a little bit about yep. yourself, what you like to do. Sure. Uh, I'm Nico. I've been living here in Hanoi for seven years. Okay. Vietnam for seven years. And uh, I'm a teacher, uh, but I also play a lot of music. So my... Uh, years in Vietnam, I've been playing a lot of music all over the place, and uh, that's a big part of me, I'd say. Okay, what, what kind of music do you play? Uh, jazz, soul, gets a little funky, throw in some reggae, okay. that kind of thing. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. I like it, I can dig it, I can dig it. Cool. And you said you've been in Vietnam for seven years. Yes. Has it all been Hanoi? No, I did, um, let me see. I did six months in the south of Vietnam, like three months in Phu Quoc and three months in Saigon okay. in 2018. So I moved to Hanoi in 2017. 2018, I, three months Phu Quoc, three months Saigon. There I was working as a musician Okay. Uh, in Phu Quoc, playing music at a hotel uh, five nights a week with like a, a, a band, like friends that I made in Hanoi. And then Saigon, I was there... What did I do? What did I do in Saigon? I uh, was playing saxophone just with a singer. Okay. And uh, we were in like a bar playing five nights a week. And I do other gigs around there. Oh, interesting, and interesting. And then after that, we are back to Hanoi. Ah. And been in Hanoi since. On a scale of one to ten, how much do you like Hanoi compared to Phu Quoc in Saigon? Uh, I definitely do prefer it. Okay. I kind of, I, uh, whenever I meet anyone that's kind of done both Hanoi and Saigon, it's, it's, it's one or the other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I'm sure you found as well, and you feel. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, visiting Hanoi and living in Saigon, it's two completely different. Two completely different. Two completely yeah, different. Yeah. I just, I, I mean, also part of me, I moved to Hanoi first, mm -hmm. so I already had like a friend base established. Okay. And, you know, I had some friends in Saigon at the time, but like, I miss my like core group of people, mm. and then I also I do quite like the the style of Hanoi. It's a bit like it's a bit gritty, a bit dirty. Like, it's like the dirt under your fingernails. Like you know, it's not always nice, but there's some interesting stories. <laughs> <laughs> adds character. Adds character, adds character. exactly. Yes, Hanoi nice. does add character. <laughs> it's got charm to it, and I think a kind of charm that Saigon doesn't quite have. Okay, I I can not, I can not understand. to throw shade at. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm. I'm not offended, but I don't think anybody else would be either, okay. so. All right. All right, Nico, that was great to know about your you know, little journey mm. behind. Have you lived anywhere else before Vietnam outside of your home country? No, I haven't. Okay. Vietnam was, yeah, first country abroad to okay. live. And where are you from? England. England? Yeah. All right. I'm guessing that Vietnam and England are vastly different. Pretty different. Um, I guess you're kind of gearing towards asking me, why did I move here? Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So um, I had done some traveling, mm -hmm. uh, and then I went back, moved back home. I was looking for music-related jobs in London. I got nowhere. Uh, like six months I unemployed. I was kind of fed up. Mm -hmm. Decided, okay, I'm going to go teach English somewhere this side of the world. Okay. Didn't really know where. I had a friend that was living here in Hanoi teaching. So I was talking to him and he kind of was like, well, here's China, here's Japan, here's Korea. This is what their deal is. Um, I'm in Vietnam at the moment. This is what it's like. And I was like, yeah, okay, cool. I thought it'd be nice to move somewhere where I already had a friend. So that's kind of what brought me to Vietnam. Okay. okay. I had a, actually, I had been, when I did that bit of traveling, I'd been in Vietnam for one week, uh, mostly it was just Hanoi and Cat Ba Island. And I didn't like it that much <laughs> when I was traveling. Okay. Uh, like, you know, it was fun, but I, like, I, was, I didn't fall in love with it there at that moment. It's just more kind of circumstantial for me moving over here. Um, you know, liked it enough to be like, yeah, okay, let's try moving here. But it's only after I moved here that's when I started to fall in love with it. Okay, interesting, interesting. So your motivation was kind of I've got nothing going on here. Why not go yep. and see something else? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay, all right. And uh, I guess I'd been working in like in a school in the UK, um, so I've always been like I've always enjoyed like working in education. 
and then I, you know, there was a, a way that I could go teach and go be somewhere different. Okay. So I'm going to hit you with a few fastball questions, and then we'll just go with it. Let's go. What was your biggest challenge with moving overseas? Uh, <laughs> you said fastball. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to keep you on your toes. <laughs> keep you on your toes. Yeah. Uh, the most challenging thing, I guess, when you first move here, mm -hmm. is probably the language. I think probably English has got better in Vietnam as I've been here. But thanks to you, right? Yeah, thanks to me, <laughs> educating <laughs> the country. <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe not the language. Uh, I think just how different it is. Okay. Just because it's so different, you know, Hanoi is so different to England, Reading, my hometown. Mm. Just, you know, the way people think, the way people act, you know, that's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, but just everything's different. And you have to learn like a whole new system. Like I guess, you know, when you're a kid, you grow up learning society around you and that becomes normal. Now you kind of have to do that again when you move to somewhere completely different. As an adult. As an adult, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. And if you could, like, tell me one lesson or the top three lessons that you've learned yeah. living abroad, what would they be? Uh, things don't go according to plan. Accept it. <laughs> Like, you, you can't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, be open. I think, you know, just be open to kind of situations that present themselves. Like, uh, sometimes I feel like back home we get so fixated on like what we like or the way we like to do something. But uh, if you want to move abroad and experience something, you have to be open. Mm -hmm. And a third lesson, hmm, I don't know, something I'd probably say, you know, along the lines of being open, just like embrace, like go for it. Okay. <laughs> you never know what kind of situation you'll find yourself in. Yeah. Like, you know, I moved to Hanoi to teach English. One year later, I was living on Phu Quoc, playing music five nights a week. Like, <laughs> I never foresaw that. And, you know, to embrace what opportunities come at you. Okay, interesting. And pros and cons mm -hmm. of living overseas what what are some of the pros and cons that you you can think of i think one of the biggest pros for me is i do feel i've learned a lot about the world uh, and a lot about myself maybe that's also getting older i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but uh, i don't know i i think what i was surprised when i moved abroad was you do meet like an expat community and then suddenly, you're not just exposed to the people of the country that you've moved to, but a whole bunch of people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. I think that surprised me a lot. And I think that's a big pro that you meet so many different people from so many different backgrounds. And uh, there, you really learn a lot. You know, you can learn anywhere. You can learn in the cafe, you can learn in the bar, you can learn in the beer hoy, just from whatever, mm -hmm. uh, from talking with so many people. Cons? Cons of moving abroad. Yeah. Um, you know what? It's difficult to send money back home. <laughs> okay. Or get money from like my Vietnamese account into my English account. Okay. That's annoying. Yeah, that one's kind of <laughs> that one's kind of Vietnam specific. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, that's one con. Um, uh, you know, Hanoi can be frustrating, but then. I lived in London whilst I was at university, and London was frustrating. But uh, like a, a unique con to Hanoi, uh, and uh, sometimes people don't always want to help you. Okay. <laughs> like even if you're trying to speak Vietnamese, and you know, if your Vietnamese isn't that bad, they're still like not interested in helping you. But you know, I don't know. Then some people do want to help you. Uh, that's not a big con, but like. I don't know, I'm, you know, you're, you're well aware, Hanoi has the reputation of people being ruder mm. yeah, <laughs> than yeah, Saigon. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I've heard people say that Vietnam in general has been a little bit ruder than yes. other countries. And yeah, yeah. What seems to be unwelcoming, but when you look at it, if you kind of back out a little bit, yeah. they're actually helping you. Yep. Uh, it's just a I little bit yeah. more tough love than... Yeah, yeah, that could be it. Yeah. I also, I had um, a month or two ago, I had a, a Vietnamese lesson and I was 
meeting my teacher. We were having a lesson in a cafe. And uh, I had to park my bike around the back. And uh, I didn't quite know where to go, but eventually I found out. And then, like, it wasn't the cafe's own parking, but like a, a family's house, and then you just pay them 5K. Um, but like, I kind of pulled up, but this, like, they didn't want to help me. They didn't want to be like, yo, park here. I just stood there. I was awkward, like, what do I do? <laughs> and no one's like saying anything. My teacher comes out, she talks to the lady, and then, like, the lady, the parking lady, she sounds like quite angry, you know, saying to me, like, yeah, go here. Like, yeah, okay, here you go. <laughs> and, I, and then tells me how much I pay her. And then um, I say, like, uh, come on, Kaat. And I say, thank you, Auntie, throw in the word for respect. And then, like, she said something, and she still sounded angry. But then my Vietnamese teacher translated, and she said, ah, she said that you spoke very skillfully. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I think the Vietnamese teacher might be lying to you. <laughs> but I know that's part of like Hanoi, you know, people sound angry with you, but they're not always that angry with you. Yeah. Well, I find that same thing in, in Saigon. It's, yeah, okay. It sounds like it's angry, yeah. but it's actually just, let's say, passion. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So now, um, through two of those at you. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to get you the question that I know you're not prepared for. Okay. That's what good. was your worst experience living abroad? Hmm. Worst experience living abroad? I feel like I've got an answer that's a bit of a, a get out clause. Okay. COVID. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, uh, actually, no, I t I t aside from COVID, being far away from family mm -hmm. is something I do find a bit difficult. And you know, sometimes if there's a, like a death in the family, then um, that can be quite hard to deal with when you're so far away. And like, if you need to go back or don't need to go back, um, you know, it depends on whatever situation you have. Uh, so I've kind of I've been through that, and that's quite difficult. And like, you know, not always in the sense of. Like I'm struggling with the death of a particular family member, but more like, ah, I'm not around my family in this time. Mm. So I'd say that's probably like one of the hardest like experiences to deal with living abroad. Okay, and how do you cope with that? Um, I think when you live abroad and you don't have your family here, it, you know, it helps make your group of friends closer you know they kind of become your family so you know you do make a, a makeshift family I feel when you live abroad and whenever you're going through something like that then that's when your your makeshift family I, I think really does come in to help you because they also kind of experience the same thing. yeah exactly yeah, yeah. okay yeah. All, right. all right now let's take it with went deep let's mm -hmm. go to the opposite side okay what's the best thing that's happened to you living abroad? best thing that's happened to me living abroad uh, I think it's probably, I've had some awesome gigs okay. <laughs> from playing music here. Uh, and what would make an awesome gig? Like your number one gig, why was it awesome? Number one gig would be, why, why would it be, it would have to be something that like I've not experienced back home from playing music. Okay. And I don't know, I think I probably, I've played my biggest gig I've ever played uh, in Vietnam, and that was 2017 Quest Festival. Oh, did you ever hear about Quest? Yeah, Festival? I've heard yeah, about okay. It. I mean, a bit of a controversy around it the year after. <laughs> 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 but before the year before was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was we played on the main stage. I was in like uh, this big jazz band. We had 19 people on stage. Wow. Uh, and we had like kind of the sunset slot. Okay. And um, it, you know, it felt like we were playing like to the whole festival, which was the whole, I think there was about five thousand people there. I don't think all five thousand people were there at that time to watch us, but it felt like big number of people okay. uh, were were watching us, and that's like the biggest show I've, I've probably still ever played. Um, so I definitely I would put that up there as one of my top experiences. Um, Uh, I don't. I don't want to put my best experience living abroad as that one show, but mm -hmm. I want to. I want to say, like, good handful of gigs okay. that have been like top tier gigs. 
So, like, as a musician, mm -hmm. coming to Vietnam was a good thing for you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, um, even at, at university, I studied music. Um, but I still feel like when I moved to Hanoi, I probably played music more. <laughs> 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 Whoops. <laughs> um, but, like, yeah, in that first year I lived here, I was playing, like, five or six nights a week. Okay. That was either pra practice, rehearsal, or, or gigs. Um, and so I was just constantly playing, 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 and um, which I didn't, I don't think I expected because I came here to teach, and you know, I'm still teaching now. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's just that, that music side of things was so unexpected, like, ah, oh, I could do something with music here. You know, I, I knew that I'd come play a little bit of music, but I didn't realize how much. Okay, okay, interesting. Is there, let's go a little different. Uh, question that I know again you're not prepared <laughs> for because uh, I didn't put I didn't give this one to you but I was thinking about it okay you go, go back in time to you finishing university yep and uh, you're at your graduation mm -hmm. you walk up to yourself and give yourself one piece of advice about moving or traveling or whatever mm -hmm. what would that one piece of advice be Don't hesitate on decisions. Okay. I think like, you know, if you want to do something, commit to it. Commit. Okay. Yeah. I can sometimes like take too long over deciding something. And then after this I'm like, come on, why didn't you just make up your mind? <laughs> <laughs> Overthinking it. In yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. And let's say you have a cousin or a brother or younger mm -hmm. sister or someone who who is thinking about making that move or yep. even an older person like mm -hmm. your mom or, or whatever yep. thinking about moving abroad but they're not quite sure mm -hmm. like, what would be your biggest piece of advice for them hmm. my biggest piece of advice for someone like that uh, I think you know one thing that kind of helped me was you know, obviously having a friend here before, but that friend showed me like, hey look, this is the part on Facebook where all the information is about this city. And so I think my biggest advice would be that moving abroad doesn't have to be such a mysterious thing. There are like many means where you can go find out a whole bunch of information from your own home where you are right now. Okay. I think, yeah. So. You're basically telling them to do their research yeah. before they move overseas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Stop bothering me. Go do your research. <laughs> Go do your research. <laughs> All right. Well, the reason why I ask is because I've done about 20 interviews up to this point. And yeah. Every single interview has had almost that same piece wow, of advice. Okay. So, like, Funny. do your own research. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Do your research before you move. Yeah. Okay. All right. Excellent. Now, Let's talk about that research. If you didn't have a friend, did you mm -hmm. have any books or anything that you looked at? You said the Facebook page. Yeah. Anything else that you looked at uh, to prepare you for moving overseas? Not really. Okay. No. No. I, uh, I think, you know, it helped that I'd done some traveling before, like okay. the, the year before. And uh, that was in uh, like a Asia, uh, like South Asia, and then into Southeast Asia. And that was my first time in Asia. So I think that really helped me before moving. Okay. If I didn't have that experience, uh, then probably wouldn't have moved to Vietnam. Okay. Would you move somewhere else? Yeah, I think so. But maybe somewhere Closer more familiar. <laughs> Closer yeah, yeah. to home, more familiar, like somewhere in Europe. Okay. For me. Um, I don't know. May, even if I didn't go traveling, I don't know. There's a small chance I might have still moved to somewhere like Vietnam. But okay. I think the chance would have been significantly lower. Lower. Interesting. And before you left, you said that you had a friend here, but were your friends and family back home, were they trying to talk you out of this? Or how did they feel about it? Uh, no one was trying to talk me out of it. Um, I remember. The job that I was in, the school I was working at, I told them, you know, they were absolutely fine with it. But um, the, the head teacher of the school, she said to me, it was like, oh, so you're moving to Vietnam? Like, Do you speak Vietnamese? I'm like, no. And then she's like, isn't that gonna be a problem for you? 
Yeah, it'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been fine. Uh, but no one had a problem. I also think when I first said I was moving, uh, I think I said I'm just going for you know, a small amount of time, which I'm sure you've probably heard this kind of story before. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, and you know, I still don't know how long I'm going to be here. Uh, but I think I will say, like after, I think like after about a year, I came home, and then I think my parents were asking me, like, okay, so what are you going to do back here now? <laughs> and then I told them, I'm like, I'm going to go back out to Vietnam. And they're like, huh, what? You're like still going to party in Vietnam? <laughs> that kind of thing. I'm like, well, you know, it's not totally partying. <laughs> um, and, and then like after, like you know, they weren't. They didn't have a problem, but they're just like a little surprised, I think. Uh, and then, uh, and then, wait, where am I going with this? Then uh, I think you know, the longer I stayed, the more they kind of got it. And then, I think the first time my parents came out here, which was about two years ago now, you know, they'd like completely understood. But when they came here for the first time, I think that's when they really went, ah, yeah, okay, we see, We're like we get it. Wow. Okay. And and you know, now my mum, she tells me like, look. Don't rush back. <laughs> it's so bad in England right now. Yeah. Why would you? Why, why would you rush back to come here? <laughs> Is there anything that you want to share with the world? Any quotes or any tidbits of wisdom that you want to give to just anyone who's thinking about moving? Anyone who's thinking who's never traveled before and thinking about taking yeah. their first trip? I'd, uh, I think I'll go back to. One of the things I previously said, I, I, I do think traveling, traveling in general, if that's for you know, tourism or if you travel to go live somewhere, I do really think you learn a lot about the whole world. Okay. Um, it's quite, I'm, I'm finding it quite difficult to fully explain what I mean. <laughs> um, but like, just from, you know, I don't want to say you go somewhere and you learn about their culture and uh, that makes you a better person, like, because that's not quite what I'm saying. But you do, you just, even just from like observations you make day to day, you, you know, you soon build up a whole idea about a place, and I don't know that kind of becomes part of you, and uh, I don't know, kind of your understanding of the world. You know, I, I, I do think we, get, I, as I said earlier, we get a bit f fixated on like my space and my time where I'm where I am right now and there's so much more to like the whole world and you know no one's ever going to learn everything but like I do think you learn a lot more about people about places mm -hmm. uh, and just how like I don't know how we as humans work you kind of I, I feel like you really learn a lot without doing anything <laughs> okay. so you, you it's like you get the the human experience uh, almost. Uh, yeah. But on a bigger level where it's now mixed in with thoughts and ideas and knowledge from other places. Yep. And uh, kind of blends in and maybe that's what makes you more of a, a well-rounded and, and yeah. more understanding person. I think so. Okay. I'm a very patient person and I think moving to Hanoi has also tested that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think any kind of traveling will test that on a, a person and you know, put you in situations you've never even dreamt of. And then, yes, you're learning about the world, but you're also learning a lot about yourself. Yeah. It's a challenge to build yourself. Yeah. 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 All right. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, what's next for you? It's a great question. Um, well, right now, with my band at the moment, we kind of have an end date. Mm -hmm. And um, like... You know, it's kind of it's sad that we have that, but we've been going as a band for four years, which I like. I take as a win. Okay, <laughs> that's a that's an accomplishment. So, um, musically, I'm thinking uh, what to do after that, and um, getting like a few ideas. Uh, kind of still playing music with kind of same same people, but like doing something a little bit different. That's basically my big thing. I'm thinking next. Okay. In terms of uh, other other stuff, I uh, I still don't quite know how long I'm going to be in Vietnam. I um, um, oh, I don't know. All right.
right, Nico, this has been a great interview so far. Thank you very much for coming on. Before we go, I want to give value back to you. Mm -hmm. And I want to know how can people get in touch with you about music, about travel, about you in general? Maybe there are somebody out there who has a huge crush on you and wants to meet you. <laughs> uh, how can they get in touch with you? I'm going to come back to that because <laughs> i got a great story. <laughs> All right. But uh, I guess the uh, best way to get in touch with me is probably Facebook, okay. Nico Seal, or um, message my band account, okay. which uh, uh, I'm an admin. Okay. Yeah. No, I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> so uh, on Facebook, that's Soul Sisters. Soul uh, Sisters? Soul Sisters. And Instagram, the same. Okay. Soul Sisters. Yep. And uh, yeah, so anyone that has a crush on me, as I, I talked about my parents, and my parents just came and visited, and they came to a show, and uh, at one point the the singer was like, uh, "Hey, this is Nico's mum," and then managed to like get got my mum up, gave her the microphone, and I knew at that point I was in for trouble. <laughs> <laughs> And then mum like made this little speech like, ah, oh, it's so nice to be here with everyone and supporting Nico and his music. And then, and then she went, but also I want to say I'm still, I'm looking for a wife for Nico. <laughs> 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 Thanks mum. <laughs> mom, I got you, I got you. All yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, one last question before we wrap everything up. Mm -hmm. As in your travels, what are you most grateful for? Ooh. Um, ooh, what am I most grateful for? Uh, I guess, particularly in my travels, I'm grateful from for you know, kind of having the the chance to go travel. Mm -hmm. Not everyone around the world has that, and uh, you know, I'm just some guy that was born in England and that has helped me travel a lot and a lot of people don't get that chance to, you know so I'm grateful that I have the chance to kind of do this um, and I guess I'm just probably grateful for you know a whole bunch of people just in whatever situation you are that like to show so much kindness you know you can meet a random person that you've never ever met a random family a random like auntie on the street, uncle on the street, and they're going to be there helping you. Mm -hmm. And you know, not always guaranteed, but uh, probably just so grateful for like sheer amount of kindness that you just come across the world. Okay, excellent. Well, again, thank you very much for coming in and sure. sharing. Thank you. If you are interested in joining us and coming on the show, please email me at expatyourlife at gmail.com. If you like this content, hit the like button, subscribe, that will help us out so much. And if you want to see more, the notification bell will tell you when we upload videos at the random times that we do. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has inspired you to do awesome things and take your first trip or move abroad yourself. Share with us what you like. Time. Peace.